Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between an XHTML versus traditional HTML. And the reason I'm doing that is because somebody that viewed my HTML tutorial sent me a comment asking me that question. So I'm going to cover it today. If you didn't see that HTML tutorial, you should click right here and watch it. Otherwise, a lot of this is not going to make any sense. But this video uh, is going to be a little bit more technical than normal, but I'll try to keep it light on the jargon. Just know that by the end of this article, you'll be able to tell people that you know how to write extensible hypertext markup language version 1 strict that is W3C compliant. First up, the W3C stands for the World Wide Web Consortium, and this is the group that basically defines what HTML is and what cascading style sheets are and how they should be used, uh, to say the least. The most current version of HTML is referred to as XHTML, version 1 strict. XHTML is now known as Extensible Hypertext Markup Language because it has borrowed a lot of formatting uh, in regards to how XML works. And XML is a language that's used to mark up or structure any type of document with tags just like HTML. But the major difference between XML and HTML is that at XML you can create your own tags instead of being stuck with the limited quantity found in traditional HTML. If you are feeling a bit confused, don't worry about it. I'm going to go through this whole process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the exact file from my HTML tutorial and convert it into an XHTML file format. There's not a lot to it. But just know that if you ever want to check any of your websites for validity, you go to validator.w3.org right here. And you can just simply type in a URL, upload a file, or directly input the information, and it will tell you if it's validated or not. And another really neat trick that a lot of people don't know about is if you paste your HTML into the checker, that's all you do is click check and it comes out, now this came out successful, but if it comes out unsuccessful and there's loads of errors, what a lot of people don't know is you can check right here, clean up markup with HTML tidy, and it'll fix most of the errors, causes a couple on its own, but it's definitely a useful tool in helping you create validated HTML. But back to the presentation. Basically, first off, in the, the opening line of the HTML file that was created in my tutorial, I have transitional, as you see here. You use transitional for the most part when your HTML is almost compliant, but not quite. Well, we're gonna make it 100% compliant, so what you wanna do is you wanna replace this line of code with this line of code. You can just copy and paste it right into your HTML code. You see it right there. So that's one major change, but it's not really that big. And now we're going to go through these couple lines of code here, HTML, and I'm going to tell you how they need to be changed from the previous. We want to change the HTML tag from just saying HTML to being more descriptive, just like this. And also, extensible hypertext markup language does not like styling to take place within the page itself. It prefers that you have all the styling take place outside of the actual code, so we're going to remove this altogether. And if we do that, this is all going to be compliant. Now let's move on to the description area, which is in the header. There's nothing here that needs to be changed. You're going to find as I go through this that there are very few places where we need to make changes. This is all 100% compliant. Now we're going to come down here and talk about some tags. Basically, there's only one thing that needs to be changed here, and I'm going to go through that. All of your tags that are considered inline, and what I mean by that is they are tags that do not force, whenever you get to the ending tag, do not force a new line. And here's some examples of some inline tags, and here's some more examples. And what you need to know in regards to these inline tags to be compliant with X to HTML, you need to just simply surround all of these tags with a paragraph tag. And that's what a paragraph tag looks like. If you surround all of them, even if you would put a paragraph tag here and a paragraph tag here, all of this would be perfectly fine and legal. Another thing you need to know is if you are creating a block quote, 
you need to put a paragraph tag after the opening block quote tag and then put a closing paragraph tag and then all of this will be compliant. On top of that, to be XHTML compliant, you are not allowed to use these tags which were previously available to you. Center tag, font tag, frames, menu, strike through, underline. Not allowed to use any of those. And here is your fixed up code that is 100% XHTML compliant. You can see here, I have surrounded all of my inline tags with paragraph tags, just like that. Compliant now. All right, then we see the center tag, remember? We looked up here, not allowed to use it anymore, so have to get rid of that. And here's the strike through tag, not allowed to use that, get rid of that. Basically surround all of your inline tags, again, with paragraph opening tags and closing tags. Now you're compliant. Now let's move on to this long line of code. Basically lists are the same as they've always been. You don't need to change anything with that. And you won't need to change anything else except for what you did before. Surround all of your inline tags with opening paragraph tags and opening and closing paragraph tags. Now let's come down here. There is one change in regards to links. Previous tutorial, you saw that I used this code right here to tell the browser what window it should open up my link when somebody clicks on it. You're no longer allowed to use this and be XHTML compliant. So just simply not use that anymore. And then everything else here, 100% compliant. What uh, needs to be changed in regards to tables and the way the tables function? Nothing. This is all compliant, 100%. Now we're moving down into the form data. Also, all of the form data, as long as you have everything encapsulated with paragraph tags, is 100% compliant. So basically, to make an HTML file into a compliant XHTML file, you just have to enclose all your inline code with paragraph tags. And if you are going to use a block quote, you need to use paragraph tags around the text inside of your block quote. And don't use, I'll actually show it to you again, do not use the target attribute inside of your links when you're creating your links. Also, do not use these tags. And that's basically all that you need to know in regards to making your HTML code XHTML compliant. And to check that everything is valid, remember, you can go to the validator website. And if you type in your code and hit enter and everything is compliant, this is what you're going to say. If you go to my website, here is all of the 100% compliant code all available to you without my comments included, and I hope this helps you out. If you have any comments, leave them below. Thanks.